The second type of frequency distribution we want to be able to create is called a grouped frequency distribution because of the nature of the data. So for grouped data, you will use a range of values, and each of these ranges are called a class. More specifically, the class is the interval of numbers that's grouping the data. So like our first class for the table above is 16 to 20. The second class, 21 to 25. And the third class is 26 to 30. But before we really get into making frequency distributions, grouped frequency distributions, we want to talk about some of the parts of the table or the distribution. The first is the class lower limit, which is just the smallest number of each class. So for this table, it would be 16, 21, and 26. And just as you would guess, the upper class limit or the class upper limit, you can kind of swap the order of those three words, is the largest number in each class. So for this particular table, it would be 20, 25, and 30. Another part of the frequency distribution, although not listed in the frequency distribution table, but really important later on, is the class midpoint. And this is just the middle value of each class, which sometimes is easy to see. Other times we need to figure out how we're going to do it. So the key here is you add the lower and upper limit within each class, meaning the same class. So like here, I'm going to take the 16 and the 20 from the first class, add those up to get 36. Then I'm going to take that 36 and divide by 2 to get 18. So now I have my first class midpoint of 18. And I repeat this process. So you know I could add the 21 and 25 of the second class to the, get 46, divide by two and get 23 for my second class midpoint. You might also just kind of start to recognize the pattern after you've done a couple of them. For the first class, it was 18, which was two numbers bigger than 16. In the second class, it was 23, which is two numbers bigger than 21. So I'm not even going to go through the math. I'm just going to add two numbers to 26 to get 28 for my last class midpoint. Again, not listed in the table, but important later. Another thing is when we construct tables on our own, we are going to be interested in the class width. And in terms of that, it's how wide a class is. Really important, all classes should be the same width. And in this example, first thing I need to do is figure out how I'm going to figure out what the width is. So the key here is you subtract a lower class limit or a class lower limit, but importantly, it's from the next lower limit. A lot of people get that wrong. They want to subtract, in this case, like the 16 and the 20, but that's not right. I'm going to take the lower class limit of 16 and that's going to be subtracted from the next lower class limit, which was 21. And when I subtract these, I get 5. So all of my class widths should be 5. And I could even double check it on this one. Take my class lower limit of 21 and subtract it from the prior, sorry, the next lower limit of 26, and I do get 5. 